As merriment makers, our goal is to create, share, and spread good news. But we can't ignore the fact that a huge part of the reason that we want to do that is because of the overwhelm of not just bad, but horrific news. And by news, we need to get real about what that means. We mean events like weather and climate change, earthquakes. We mean pandemics, sickness, hunger, poverty, homelessness, unclean water. And we mean people. We mean the actions of people towards other people. The negligence, the lack of compassion, racism, sexism, ageism, xenophobia, the crime, the acts of violence from one person to another, acts of terrorism. When we say news, we have allowed ourselves to disassociate from the intimacy of the acts happening to and by people like us. The word news removes humanity from our fear, horror, and grief. So today, I want to talk about how we got so inundated with bad news, what good news is, and how we can make more of it. When we say bad news, let's be real about the fact that all of this is just life, right? Life, bad news, good news things that happen, life. So I don't want to label news as good or bad, really. The point of this is about fear and positivity, the spectrums of the emotions that we feel as a result of what we see. And I would like to give more balance to the feelings of because right now we seem to only be getting, because right now we seem to be only getting feelings of aggression, anxiety, and fear. And I would love to balance the spectrum and allow us to be inspired to feel feelings of creativity, connectivity, and altruism. The first printed news didn't start until like the 1400s in Germany. And then the first television news didn't start until 1940. And then live news started in 1980, which is what the movie Anchorman 2 is about. Humans were around a long time without instantaneous access to news, and now all of a sudden we have new syndromes like bad news fatigue and headline stress disorder, and that's how inundated we are with constant updates. According to the Pew Research Center, 66% of Americans are overwhelmed and worn out with just how much news there is. So how did it get this bad? Our human nature, our negativity bias, we, we have this objectively stronger reaction, both emotionally and physiologically, to negative news. It's the same reason that you can hear 20 positive comments, but the one that's negative is going to stay with you. If a 30-minute news show was 80% filled with content about kindness missions and then 20% about violent crimes, the violent crimes are more likely to stick out to your memory because they represent danger. And we're animals and we need to know about danger to survive. The media and news is aware of how much our brains and bodies respond to negative stimulus, and they take advantage of that because they're a business. They capitalize on our fear and exaggerate stories and leave titles deliberately ambiguous for dramatic effect. And many networks choose to curate the content they share with a much higher percentage of negative, violent, and fear-mongering content than positive content. And that's not because it's necessarily a fair representation of what's happening in the world, but because at the end of the day, the network is a business and they know what sells. It wasn't even until the 2010s that some media agencies started reporting exclusively negative news for ratings. So we need to take some responsibility. This means that unless a network is exclusively reporting positive news stories, that we will remember the negative news stories and feel in danger, like I mentioned. And that means that there is a responsibility on us as viewers of the news in any format, on TV, on TikTok, on, you know, an article, to understand that anything being broadcast is very likely to leave us feeling with a higher sense of stress, adrenaline, and fear because our bodies are doing our best to protect us for survival. The news as itself is a trigger warning. News and journalism were originally intended to be an objective representation of current events. But when we put our faith blindly in a news anchor to represent the value systems of an entire network that they work for and hope that that network is providing an accurate representation of what happened that day or week or month in our city, country, or globe, we're kind of out of luck. I remember during the riots in Baltimore in 2014, I traveled to New York City. 
when I was meeting people out there, I told them where I was from and they were shaken. Based on the news they had seen, they were under the impression that Baltimore had literally been fully burned to the ground, and that was not an exaggeration. Yeah, there had been a fire at the CVS and multiple riots, and when I had heard how the non-local news reporters had edited and utilized the footage to create an inaccurate representation of the situation for their ratings, I realized at that moment that no news network deserved my blind trust. There are plenty of professionals with journalistic integrity. And you also need to ask yourself how easy it would be for any story to be changed even slightly, not even by the journalist, the photographer, the anchor, you know, anyone can edit anything even slightly to motivate you, the viewer, to feel anger, fear, or to act a certain way, be it with voting, moving, or making a purchase, especially if you weren't there to witness it yourself. My point is that Baltimore was not on fire when the news said that it was, and all the negative things you are seeing on the news might only be 2% true or 95% true. It doesn't matter, but it might not be the truth. So is there a point in letting your mind run rampant with stress, anxiety, and fear over something that was dialed up with the intent? to cause you distress, that's not even true. Also, the amount of attention we give to negative news is allowing them to continue operating the way that they are. It's like a toddler having a tantrum. If you continue to keep watching, clicking, refreshing, and having it on in the background, you are financially supporting negative news outlets to continue functioning the way that they have. If we stopped clicking, watching, calling them on their BS, and sought out specific resources for the causes that we actually care about, independently, instead of having random topics we didn't know we were supposed to be radically stressed about coming in all the time, and then we're like, oh, now I'm up in arms about that. Now I'm upset about this. Da 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 da. Oh, I mean, might be a different world. I don't know. Just saying. I think we could care about the things that we care about. I think we could research them on our own, donate to them, use the time that we are passively watching or reading the news to become an active advocate and use that time to actively support a specific cause. Wouldn't that be a lot more deliberate to stop letting a stranger dictate what you are and are not supposed to be upset about? I realize as I say this, the argument can be made for the passive consumption of positive news. And that is a completely valid point. The consumption of passive scrolling of any screen device or someone else's art or creation or whatever it is can be used as a numbing device of any kind and a way to not live in our own life. I guess my point is that if we are going to be in a space where we feel the need to dissociate numb and use a screen as a coping mechanism, I would rather there be representation of the connectivity of humanity and inspire faith instead of fear. At the beginning, I mentioned the humanity we can conveniently gloss over with the term news. It's kind of like dulling down art to the umbrella term of, quote, content. Once I heard someone say that we have the word genocide, so we don't have to explain the details of what exactly is happening during a genocide. I don't really believe or agree with that because that's what words are created for. But I do agree that sometimes words give us the luxury of moving past intimacy. If you need to slow down and explain something, you really need to think. Go ahead and explain the internet in a sentence, real quick to someone who doesn't know what it is. Much easier to have the word internet, isn't it? Especially when you might not fully understand what it is. I too have the goal of not wanting to gloss over bad news, even in this microspace of this episode. When I propose that we need to make, share, and spread more good news, my goal is not to whitewash or drown out the voices of stories that need to be heard, people who are being marginalized and need access to resources. Journalism is a powerful tool to create representation, connect communities, and expose corruption. When used well, it can do one of the best things we can do as humans, which is to tell the truth. And now we get to do that in real time. But the truth is not always happy. I know this very well, and so do you. I don't want to pretend that it is, and I hope you don't either. And I also don't want us to all live in fear constantly. I don't want to take away opportunities from capable communications-based professionals. I want to add opportunities on the other side of the, of the spectrum. When I sit at the nail salon and they have the news on in the background, the exact same news will play four times in a row at the five o'clock news hour. The content they have is minimal for what they're there to talk about that day. There might be like five stories for an hour. 
It's mostly negative, voyeuristic. It feels very icky, tacky in a bad way. And then they do it all the exact same at six o'clock. Maybe there's one more story and then two out of the three same news anchors talk about it. I'm just proposing that one of those hours could be dedicated to showcasing a different side of what's happening. Additional perspectives, positive truth. Can't do a full hour because you're worried about people not being able to tune in at the same time? What about half of the hour? What about 30% of the hour? How about not all of the stories? We have to start somewhere. The truth is that in that hour, all of the truth is not being reported. There's a million things that happened in 24 hours. Remember that news is just stuff that happened. Someone decided that this stuff was newsworthy. So why is this negative stuff more important than the positive stuff? There's so much more negative stuff that happened in the past 24 hours that's not even making the cut, right? What about all the good stuff? So much stuff. Somebody probably thought they saw an alien, someone's mom died, someone's someone fell in love. Like, why are those not as interesting? Speaking of what's making the cut, I want you to ask yourself if you've ever seen something on the news that was positive and you thought, how is this newsworthy? They'll let anything on the news now. And then I want you to ask yourself who taught or told you what the qualifiers were to get on the news. All right, now let's talk about good news. When you're removing a habit from your life, it's really difficult to just stop doing it. Even if you have the ability to stop cold turkey, ham and cheese sandwich, or whatever people say, you're going to notice where that thing used to take up space. It's a lot easier to inch a habit out with another habit. If you want to stop eating junk food, you start eating a ton of veggies instead, so you're not just hungry, right? To stop smoking, you will start chewing gum, so you still have something in your mouth. So yes, what I am suggesting is you replace bad news with good news. And that's my theory. News is just things that are happening. Stuff that we think is worthy enough to report on and share. So if we A, start doing kind, compassionate, helpful, positive, and uplifting things, B, document them, C, share them, and D, prioritize them as much as other things that are happening, we will see more good news. Here are some other things you can do to promote good news. One, comment on your local news station's social media and say something kind and respectful, like, I love it when you include positive news segments. Two, watch the scene in Anchorman 2 where Ron Burgundy's team goes live on the air for the first time and talks about things they think people might want to hear about, which include like animals, home runs, and weather. It's on YouTube as What's Right with America, <laughs> which might get you on a list, but um, it's if you put in Anchorman after it, it should pop up. Number three, when you hear someone share a negative news story or a headline or are just kind of like gossiping, but it's about news, you can respond with something positive that you heard happen in the world. And you can like get a couple stories to yourself with. You can even write them down in your notes section on your phone. So for example, if someone's like, oh my God, can you believe da 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 da? It's just another way to gossip. I want you to be like, oh my God, can you believe that they're installing friendship benches in this other country? Can you believe that smoking is actually down for the first time in this many years? And if you don't have enough good news, you can subscribe to Merriment Text and every single day I send you a good news story. It'll light up your life for Share a positive news story on social media. That's amazing. Like <laughs> every Monday I share merriment memes on Instagram. Number five, make a list of things you see people doing out in the world that could be considered good news. I want you to reframe what is good news. Falling in love is good news, you know? Um, your cat doing something funny, that's good news. Someone helping someone is good news. Everything that makes you smile is good news. We need to lower our expectations and standards for what brings us to our knees with joy. I really need us all to raise our expectations and standards for what we what we will and will not take with bullshit and lower them with what will make us laugh. You know, we're doing it in the wrong way on, on both sides. It's really silly. Okay, uh, number six, interview someone who is creating good news. Maybe you can get a little muse news, <laughs> news muse, <laughs> get some inspiration off of them or just ask them, you know, I'm, in, I'm starting this new series where I'm interviewing a merriment maker every week or just finding someone doing something interesting, you know, and you can just be like, why is it that you're doing that? Tell me more about this. I saw this guy the other day, he had smiley face stickers on his helmet and I said, tell me about those. Start a conversation 
conversation. Number seven, come up with your own list of merriment makers, people who you know are spreading joy and creating good news. So who are those people? They can be famous. They can be people that you don't know. They can be people that, you know, it could be like your florist or something. Maybe you kind of know them, but you don't, you know, like you're kind of sure her name is Betty, but like you have no idea where she lives or anything else about her, but you know that she always ties the ribbons like really, really special. And that makes her great. You can think about like your doctor who always gives your kid an extra sticker and that makes him so happy. That's a merriment maker, you know? It can be a celebrity that brings you joy. Like if you love the way Ariana Grande sings or something, that's fine. Like that can be a merriment maker for you. Or it can be an Instagram person or something. I don't know. Eight, if you are a news person, try stop watching the news. Try, try stop reading it. Try unfollowing regular news stuff and just see how it affects you for a week. Try like logging your anxiety and stuff and then logging it again after a week. Number nine, use the time that you were watching the news to deliberately focus on a cause that you care about. I think this couldn't be used regardless if you were a news person or not to think about something that you are passionate about and dedicate a time every week to doing something about it. You know, what is your action step? You're in a space of cognitive dissonance if you say that you really care about something, but you're not taking any action on it. So if you say that you are passionate about helping X population with this cause, then what have you done for me lately, babe, right? What's a way that you can do something this month for them in the next 30 days? can be a micro step, but let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Number, where was I at? (laughs) Number 10, I think. Yeah. Focus on embodying joy so that you yourself can become a positive news story in the future. This is really important in the merriment making method and theory. You must embody joy before you spread joy. We don't have you out there spreading joy unless you feel good. So ultimately, I probably should have put this first. I don't want you to overexert yourself. You need to feel good so you can do good, right? That's the saying. But also, this is really good incentive because it's ultimately like a comeback story, right? It's your own metamorphosis, transformation, evolution, comeback kid kind of, you know, montage story. So if you become your own positive news story, like, What is your transformation? Is it going from depressed to more happy? Is it going from one body to another? Is it going from one house to another? Like, I don't know. Like, what is the current transformation that you're interested in that will help you embody even more joy? Not I'll be happy when thinking. We want to embody joy now, right? But what will help you radiate and expand your own weirdness, enhance your own unique attributes. What would be your ultimate positive news story and how can you start living in the moment now to make that happen? That's a better way to say that. Number 11 is to do an act of kindness and become your own good news. Hashtag merriment making. So I mean, that's, I have so many ideas for random acts of kindness and there's so many on the internet. Like it's just overwhelming, but you know, acts of kindness can be very simple. It's really just another way to say, be extra, extra nice to someone. It can be premeditated. It can be in the moment. It can be anything from smiling to giving a gift. It's it's just, can be to a stranger, can be to a friend. It doesn't matter. It's literally just being nice. (laughs) Um, Number 12 is to introduce someone else to the world of merriment making. Do you think that you know somebody who is not necessarily just into self-love, but into joy, into the idea or could really benefit from the idea of good news and and loving themselves, the world, embodying joy, and then their weirdness and turning up the dial on play. Weird, fun. And would they be into this? Like, that could be really fun to do this together. Can you be a news team? That could be really fun. And then number 13, I've got some Instagram accounts for you to follow. And I'm sure they also have other platforms and stuff like TikTok and all that jazz. I mean, me, obviously, Tanks Good News, Good News Network, Global Positive News, Upworthy, Some Good News, Good news movement, good news feeds, openly gay animals, bright side of IG, good news dog, today show, yes magazine, your positive news, the happy broadcast. I'll put them in the show notes. I think the last thing I want to say is when we talk about being the change you wish to see, I know that if you're listening to this, you probably are likely interested in good news because you feel like there isn't enough. And If you feel that way, you have to start it. You have to start it. And I know that it's really, really annoying to be the thing that starts the chain. Believe me. Believe me, I know. It's really, really, it's overwhelming. It's 
frustrating. You kind of maybe get a feeling of bitterness. It's that feeling of I'm on my own, I'm an adult, and I don't have anybody to take care of me kind of thing. It's also this feeling of overwhelming responsibility that why do I have to be the one? Why am I always the one? Maybe you're the person in your friend group that's always like the one reaching out, the one communicating, the one starting to make plans, the one that has to pick the restaurant, that kind of thing. And I get that. I really, really get all of that. And as somebody who has made up the name of their job and doesn't fit into really anything and has to explain everything about themselves <laughs> to everybody, I just want to I just want to let you know that sometimes as an artist, as a creative, as a helper, as a weirdo, as a merriment maker, you're going to have to start the chain, especially if you want to get other people on board. When the passion truck has slowed down, when the ripples have ceased the inertia, somebody has to take it up. Somebody has to throw the pebble. Somebody has to start the truck again. You have to give it a jump shot. I don't know how many metaphors you fucking need, but it's like, um, it's like the good news texts that I started. It's like the membership that I started. It's like the art that I make. No one else was doing it. I had to do it. Do I, do I wish that someone else would do it and I could see it? Yeah. When I throw a party, do I wish that I could just be in attendance? Oh my God, yes. Oh my God, yes. I wish that I could just experience the party. The visionaries do. We really wish that we could just sit down and come to the party as our own guests, but we have to put it on. We have to be the host. Somebody has to run the operation. So I need you to start the project. I need you to start the project. I need you to recruit more merriment makers. And unless you do that, we will continue to stay at stage now, which is stage zero. We can't keep complaining. We can't keep saying there's not enough good news. We cannot keep saying it's not enough. There's nothing good. There's nothing good out there. Everyone's annoying. Everyone's mean. Everyone's doing violence. Everyone, you know, whatever it is, whatever your complaint or feeling or belief is, it's not not valid. It's fair. And I need you to do some shit about it. Okay, so I need you to step up. I need you to pull on the big girl pants or whatever the fuck people, <laughs> magnet slogan. And I need you to make some art, your art, your lens of merriment making, your good news. Is it getting a roll of stickers and handing two out? Is it that simple, honey? Is it that simple? But I need you to be the change. We can't just post pictures of be the change you wish to see. That doesn't mean shit if you're not doing it in real life. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It only means something when you're dressed as a banana on the street or whatever that version is for you. The good news, though, is that sometimes when you are making your own good news, you will attract other people very much like you. And you might meet your own April, like I did. And I found someone who has a ball pit in her basement and walks on stilts and surprises me with balloons on my porch and loves to do pranks and make art installations and kills only with kindness. I love that woman so dearly. I am so grateful for her and I never would have found her if I wasn't making my own art. I found her because I was doing girl art. I really owe everything to that. She completely changed my life. I do get to go to the party and I have gotten to go to the party that I wanted to throw because of her. In fact, I got to go to parties that I couldn't have even imagined because of her. And you can find that too. There might not be thousands of them. There might not even be 10 of them. There might not even be two of them. But there is one other like you, at least. That's an amazing find. But you're not going to find them if you're not making your own good news. You're not. So you better start. You better start. And then you will get to go to the party. You can co-host. You can take turns. And I hope you know this is a metaphor for everything. All right. Go be your own good news. Remember, you have to feel good to do good. I love you. <laughs>